we're at the Yaki Reserve, and there's been more than 30 years of research on the, kind of the ecology of the alligator. What I'm interested in is how the environment, contaminants, nutrition, influences genes and leads potentially to birth defects or leads to health. So this whole idea of disease versus health, environment influences on disease and health. The alligator is an incredible sentinel species. So it's an animal that lives out here, stays in one spot. We've caught animals this year that were caught 30 years ago, 100 feet from where they were. So they are telling us the quality, the health of this environment. And at the genetic level, when we actually study genes of the ovary of the testis, it doesn't matter whether they're studying an alligator or a human. It's the same genes and the same outcomes. We early on showed that environmental contaminants can mimic hormones. So hormones are chemicals that actually turn cells on or off, make them grow or not. And so we've been able to show that, that various environmental contaminants, pesticides, um, plasticizers, have the potential to change how genes are turned on and shut off, leading to certain diseases. We've now found, for example, on alligators exposed to pesticides, an ovarian condition which is very similar to what you see in humans and women who have polycystic ovary syndrome or have premature ovarian failure. So our goal here is to study specific hypotheses. It's to address specific questions on how contaminants influence the development and functioning of the reproductive system. I'm interested in that in alligators, but I'm also interested in what the alligators can tell us about us. So we have two, two issues here. One is to try and understand this environment so we can preserve low country South Carolina. We can understand these reserves. We can understand the potential dangers. I mean, we're here in this gorgeous place today. I mean, there aren't any people around. There's no industry, but there's still contaminants here. Contaminants come down the rivers. They come in airborne. And so our question is, what's the quality here? In June, we came out here, we collected the eggs. We took all the eggs back because if we leave any eggs, the raccoons come in and take them. We take them back to the lab because we want to know under control conditions, no predation, no flooding from hurricanes, you know, no variations in temperature, how good are those eggs? And under perfect conditions, how many eggs hatch? And what we're finding is about 68% of the eggs that mom lays hatch out. Now, that's lower than it should be. That, that figure should be about 90%. And so it's telling us that maybe there's something wrong with those eggs and we need to in fact study it in more detail.